Next up, we got Ahmed Abu Shaban. Where you at? He's here. Keep the clap if you're getting up here. Um, Alright, so the title of the poem is called uh, What is Love? <laughs> it's not a love poem, but you'll see what <clears throat> What is love but another word we give meaning to? Who defines a word such as this? Is it you? Is it I? Or is it ambiguous? Is it tangible? Can we actually see love? Or is it something as real as the air that we breathe, but as enigmatic as a foggy night at sea? Does love really exist? Some say it does, others say it doesn't. But how credible are these people to our solution? If one made a simple mistake searching for love but lost, and say love is only but a myth of pain and humiliation. While one acquires love at their first glance and believe it is to be eternal with ever happiness, who are they to tell us what love is? Who is anyone to define a word as intricate as this? For love varies from being to being. The love of a child for their mother opposed to the love of a couple, opposed to the love of this world and what it offers, is completely incomparable as if love evolves. Fluctuating selectively upon each and every person, so can one person really put a set value to this word? I say not, as each person has this word living in them, unique to them, like the DNA that they were born with. But for me, Love is heavy on the scale, and I only use it when I mean it. Thank you. Last but not least, on the open mic, please do a big round of applause for Nasser Muhammad. Two parents who immigrated from East Africa, Somalia, and Tanzania, respectively. So, so just take my words figuratively and not literally, please. All I really want for this Eid is I let my pen bleed. Ya Allah, please help my Ummah, all the rogues in need. For focusing on creed while neglecting their deeds. And if you're in the place tonight, then you better take heed. Shout out to the MSA for hosting tonight's event. And after I'm through spitting, you'll find your money well spent. <laughs> to boast and brag about my talents is tonight is not my intent. I just want to put the Ummah on my back so that I can represent peoples whose every day is misery and torment. And as you sit here on the SEC tonight, ladies and gents, I just want to keep it real, so do I have your consent? You see, in my opinion, the first world is more like the third world. And the third world is more like the first world. So my parents first took me to Somalia in 2004. They lost my grandmother, the woman I deeply adored. We only met for two months, but I wish that I had stayed more because there I saw the true reasons why pirates left short. And yes, Somalia is a failed state in international terms. The reasons why I pray that everyone learns. And that I just seen a sight that left me speechless. Entire families lived within homes built of plastic recyclable bags. And as soon as we get a paycheck, we run into the mall because everybody want to pop tags. So every day his family is going from riches to rags. 
own to their opinion of the American flag. This is for the fathers who shelter their families underneath the tent. And we cry because we part of the 99%. Recognize the money we spent on last month's rent could have possibly prevent people, could have possibly prevent the death of 100 Ethiopian malaria victims by buying them just a mosquito net. And as we the men complain the vent of how annoying our co-workers are, so when these mothers walk 20 miles every day to get water from a well because they don't have a car, Iraqi children are born with worse birth defects than Hiroshima's atomic bomb. And now sisters is complaining because there weren't decorations on the caliber of a high school prom. For the last two years, Burmese Muslims have been burnt alive. And we spending our money so that we can go see Drake live. Life is too valuable to me, leave you can job. It's passing as we speak, I want to do shot that for and I don't mean to scare you, I really wish that you would smile. I'm hoping I can touch your heart like a minute and eight mile. How many of Lonnie's over the last three decades have been limbless due to Soviet landmines? Within my government, I'm terrorist. I'm on every day at lines. This is for the martyrs of Rabia, excuse me. Egypt was stolen through a military coup. To the martyrs of Rabia, I swear my heart bleeds for you. And they say two wrongs don't make a right, but seeing Israel still full of steam is a painful sight. And I have, no word, I have no words to describe the plight of Syria. Even though I could pray, dear God, let Bashar and company get eaten by bacteria. I'm afraid my heart is turned colder than Siberia. I need to get back to Allah, Jannah is Liberia. And this one I forgive my lines. <laughs> American drones cover Pakistani skies. Who's gonna stand up to the cowards in the ISI? <laughs> Be thankful for what you have by knowing the poverty of others. Remember, she who bore you heaven lies underneath the feet of mothers. We have a silent killer in our home, it's called racism. My father left Saudi and never wished to return. With all due respects, he was discriminated against, so he had to let it burn. I felt if he'll perform that, and I wonder what he'll say. Instead, I'll focus on improving the states because I'm native to the bay. <laughs> Tonight, I want to, excuse me. Bilal ibn Rabah's life is the legacy of black glory, and tonight I wish to share with you my true story. You see, I grew up the mismatch, excuse me, I grew up the odd man out, the mismatch sock. I was the only multilingual child on my block. And I don't blame my homies for not recognizing my diversity. I mean, they wasn't really on track for university. But what, what hurt me most was the insults from my brothers and the dean. It was quite a scene. As I stand in the house of Allah, I wish I could laugh like Mr. Bean, but I heard this act from Philistine called, yeah, that's what. Oh, black man, black man, don't you understand? We try to talk it out, but he didn't seem to bother. So instead of talking to him, I turned to his father. And that, that is nothing compared to what I want to share next. It made every muscle in my neck flex. I said, give me the ballad of the book, just like Malcolm X. Uncles are speaking in the be thinking I don't understand. Threatening me like they some southern whites and this is their land. They refer to black folks as I be the first human slaves. Ya Allah, forgive them before they enter their graves. See, our differences in color and language are manifestations of Allah's beauty. Unfortunately, we got it twisted. We misfulfilled our duty. Life started when your father's sperm fertilized your mother's egg. We are equal. Yo, no one should have to beg for equal recognition because this, life is this lifetime is counted. Actions define the self and soon we will be accounted. We turn our back on the Quran. That is the greatest crime. And as I spit this rhyme on Pacific Standard Time, I'd like to share a few verses from Surah 103. It's translated this time. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Wal-asr inna al-insana lafi ghus Inna al-ladhina amanu wa'aminu s-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sab God swears by time that all of humanity are losers except those who are wise, intelligent users of life they fulfill the master's commands, 
and neglect their desires because they know the angels are recorded. Do you see any wives? Faith, righteousness. Faith, righteousness, and patience are their character traits. For anyone who obtains them, indeed, heaven awaits. Thank you. So that was the open mic portion. Let's give it up for all the artists who shared their stories. Right. What's coming up next? I wanted to say we're going to have a short break, but before that, I need to handle some business. So we're going to have some refreshments and stuff like that. It's still on its way. So I do have one thing to tell you guys. And that is that we have three judges for the slam, and we have two more that we're going to need, and we're actually going to need them from the audience today, so it's your lucky day, whoever is out there. Who's feeling particularly judgmental tonight? Is anyone <laughs> <laughs> judgmental? We got this guy, and we need one sister. We got one right over here. She was early. I saw her. All right, so if you guys, what's your name? Adib. Adib, you're my roommate, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me one interesting thing about yourself, Adib. Adib, hamburgers upside down. <laughs> You like to see <laughs> hamburgers upside down. And back there, I can't see who. who, who say it again? Kissa. Kissa? Kissa. Nice to meet you. And uh, what's, what's one interesting thing about you? That's her fiance. Give it up for them. What's going to happen is the slam is going to come right after this refreshment period. You can check out the trophies, but all the poets that are participating, I'm going to need you guys to head over here, this area. We need to have a little pep talk, tell you the rules and all that stuff, but it's going to be really exciting. Some very, very good poets are going to be coming out here. Amir Suleiman is going to be featuring, and Sohail's in the crowd too, so give it up for Sohail. <laughs> all right, have fun. The food's coming soon, all right? I'll let you know when it's here, but just chill, relax, have fun, enjoy yourselves. We'll be back reconvening in like 15 minutes.